Hey guys, it's David from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Juki Junkies, and today we're going to be going over the common user errors on a Juki TL sewing machine, which there's quite a few. However, they're all really easy to fix. And so today we're going to do short clips individually on each problem so that way you can kind of skip and scan through it and we're going to list down below each problem with the time frame so you can actually click in the description if you're having a certain issue you can just kind of look for that issue and then click on that and it'll bring you straight to that video so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't choose to don't forget that we are a juki authorized dealer so if you ever have any questions to give us a call and we do post on youtube as regular as possible sometimes it's once a week sometimes it's once a month so please make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's get into this video Alrighty, so the first quick little issue that people have is sometimes they don't realize that there is th two thread spool stands, so you can actually have your machine threaded at all times, and you can wind your bobbin, especially if you have two of the same colors or if you're using two different colors. But let's jump into bobbin winding number one, okay? So number one, when doing the bobbin winding, a lot of people go through this little hole right here, or they go through this hole on the bottom. Well, technically, it's the top hole. This little hole is the hole you need to be going through. And then what you need to be doing is you need to be going around this tension disc. And one of the key tricks that I like to show people, common issue, is that this thread comes out of this tension disc. Well, that makes a no bueno bobbin. No good. So you want to make sure that you're kind of holding this back thread and flossing it through that tension disc so it's nice and deep in that tension disc and it doesn't just flop out when you go to start threading your bobbin. So now that I have it there, I can use my hand back here to pick up the bobbin and go through that top hole like that from top or bottom to top like so put that on there rotate it until it clicks into place and then close this and the other big issue a lot of people have is now they let go of this thread and when they go to hit the gas pedal for some reason it tends to like to fly out of this tension disc so what I like to do is I like to hold hopefully you can see this hand and this hand I like to hold both of these like this and hit the gas pedal at the same time now once it starts going, I can let go of this hand, and then I just hold on to this hand until it gets wound up like that, and you can literally just pull it and it snaps right off. And now I'm ready to wind the whole bobbin, and it's gonna have great tension. So what does great tension look like? Let's just show you that real quick. Great tension means that your bobbin is super tight like that. It's not squishy, and it looks like it's in perfect order, flat as can be. Alrighty guys, so the next step is going to be threading your machine and making sure you go through all the subtension disc and tension disc uh, the proper way without missing them or skipping them or going behind them or not going all the way in them. So let's go ahead and cut this thread right here, pull the thread out from here, and remember when you're pulling out your thread you should always be pulling the path that it's going, you should never be pulling backwards. Um, that's always a good tip to know. So now we're going to thread the machine. Obviously, you're going to be going through this thread guide, and we do have a lot of videos on this, but this is why we're going through this a little bit more in depth. Um, you're going to be going from top to bottom, missing the first or missing the second hole, going through this, the third, top to bottom again. So it's like that. And remember, this is an extra step of tension. So if you do need more tension on the top, you could always go through all three. However, you don't always need to, especially when we're just using glide 40 weight. Um, so now for the next step is this subtension knob. A lot of questions are, is this supposed to be pushed in all the way where this bolt is hanging out a little bit, or is it supposed to be flush, or is it supposed to be off a little bit? Well, the, the right answer is it should be flush. You should run your finger across this and maybe just feel a slight bump or no bump. So let's just go like that, nice and flush. And when I'm threading this machine, I'm threading it with the foot down. You can thread it with the foot up or down. I prefer honestly it being down because I feel like it gets in the tension disc better and I also feel when the foot is up if you let go of your flossing method it can possibly actually come out of the tension disc and when you go to sew with it it's not properly seated in the tension disc that's why I personally like it down it's a controversial topic a lot of people do it up or down but I'm gonna do it like the way I like to do it so I'm flossing the machine constantly with both hands and now I'm gonna be going around the top of this subtension disc making sure I'm in the middle of it going back right and then from right to left I'm going around this next tension disc and I'm, my foot's actually up right now um, so yeah going in that next tension disc flossing it making sure it's all the way in there touching that main uh, shaft or bolt you could call it um, it's all the way in that tension disc and then I'm gonna be coming back around and going back down to the left catching that uh, that little tension spring and we do sell these springs on our website if you break that jukijunkies.com then around this little guide back up through here so it clicks through there 
in here so it clicks through this little guide here and this thread guide which we also sell on our website and then obviously you can thread your machine or um, thread your yeah thread your needle so that's how you're going to properly set up your machine for threading on the Juki TL model machines let's go to step three Alrighty guys, so the next thing is obviously you're supposed to thread your or set your tension with the foot down. However, a lot of people set the tension with the foot up. And as you can see, when you put the foot up, the tension dial actually shifts, causing your numbers to be off. I got a phone call the other day, my tension dial's magically moving. Well, it's because the tension dial was being set with the foot up and then she'd put it down and it'd move. So you're wanting to make sure that you're setting your tension with the foot down and that's gonna be your most accurate reading where it should be all the time. So never set it with the foot up. It also doesn't set it properly when you do it like that. So always foot down when setting the tension. Alrighty guys, so part four is your pressure foot pressure. Obviously this is a very important part of your machine and this can change the way you, you're sewing drastically. So you wanna make sure that your pressure foot pressure is set to the right pressure for piecing and quilting and just the regular day sewing. We like the pressure foot pressure at this little notch right here. It's like right past the first dot onto the third click, right below the third and the fourth in between those two. And to adjust that, you're actually just twisting this knob up here and you can see it moves. The little blue dial will move up and down. Obviously, if you're sewing over thicker stuff, you probably want to loosen it a little bit. And if you're sewing over thinner stuff, you want to tighten it a little bit. And that can also change based on how many layers it is and thicknesses and all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of understand your pressure foot pressure based on what your material is acting like when you're sewing. Alrighty guys, needle threader, step five. One of the most common user errors on this machine. Very simple solutions, but very common to uh, run into issues here. So one of the number one things is your size needle. If you're below an 8012, the eye of the needle is too tiny and it's not gonna work with the needle threader. If it's above 8012 or 8012, you're good to go, okay? Now, keep in mind, threads. You can't use the needle threader with industrial threads or threads that are below 30 weight. Now. Maybe you might be able to use a 30 weight thread. However, you might have to have a 116 needle. It's kind of dependent on the different variables that happen, needle sizes and threads, thread weights. So if you use your needle threader, let's, let's go ahead and use the needle threader, get familiar with it with a 40 weight thread and a size 9014 or an 8012. Figure out how it functions. It functions flawlessly, perfect. Now when you start moving to different weight threads and different size needles, if you if you feel like you're pushing its limit, don't do it. If you feel like you might be able to see if it works with a 116, 116 and 30 weight thread, try it out. If it doesn't work, stop. Okay, you don't want to push its limits too hard because if you do, you'll bend your needle threader and then you have to replace this $9 piece. Another thing to keep in mind is the needle down, needle up function. Press needle down, needle up and thread it when it's in its up highest position because that'll be the easiest way to do it and it'll be the most consistent way to do it as well. So. That is pretty much all the steps that I can think of right off the top of my head, and I think that'll eliminate all of the common user errors on the needle threader. Step six, changing out your needle. Alrighty guys, it's a very simple process, but commonly mistaken. So to change out your needle, there is a flathead screw on the right side of this needle bar, and you're gonna use your T-screw or a small little flathead screwdriver, and you're gonna just crack that. And when you crack that screw, you just wanna crack it enough where or loosen it enough where your needle starts coming out. You don't want to over loosen it because then uh, the thread guide um, assembly area will start falling apart and that's no bueno because then you'll have to watch another video on how to reassemble that. So don't over loosen it, okay? So now we have the needle out. We're gonna replace the needle. What I like to do is I like to kind of put the needle right in between the foot in that um, needle plate hole and then go right back up. The flat side of the needle needs to be facing the right side of the machine, especially when you're in the front of it. And you're gonna just kind of push it up. I like to push it up till I hear it kind of hit the rock bottom. And you can actually see on the left side of this needle bar, you can actually see the needle going all the way to the top and you can see it hitting the needle bar. So now that I have it all the way up, I'm gonna hold it with one hand and just hand tighten this down enough where it's gonna hold the needle. And then I'm gonna grab a grip of my flathead screwdriver and go ahead and tighten that down. And you don't want to over tighten it because you could break some pieces in there if you over tighten it like crazy and then you're going to be replacing more parts. So you just want to get it nice and hand snug, tight enough where you know that it's not going to fall out while you're sewing. There you go. Part seven, inserting your bobbin case. This is a very commonly uh, common user area right here. So in taking it out, obviously you're going to use this little door to pull it out. And inserting it, I like to tell people not to use the door because you won't hear it click. 
So making sure that little U is facing up, the door hinge is facing to the right. Um, you're just going to put it in there like that, and then you're gonna put your finger right here and listen to it click. Hear that click? When you hear it click like that, you know it's properly inserted. And the problem with using this little trap door to insert it is I'll show you how it sounds when you use the door. You don't really hear the click. You just hear the door shut. And sometimes it won't be inserted all the way. And then you're gonna run into much bigger issues than just doing it the right way, which is with the door closed and hearing it click. That's just the easiest way to not make any mistakes. Okay, so that is step seven. Step eight, inserting the bobbin in the bobbin case, making sure the thread is going clockwise versus counterclockwise like a computerized machine would be. You're just going to insert the bobbin into the bobbin case like that with that thread coming down on the right side, which is clockwise. Then you're gonna pull the thread down into that little slot right there, and you're there gonna pull the thread over into this little groove right there. Voila, now you can hold the bobbin case and pull the thread, and you know that you have it inserted properly. Step nine. Tightening the bobbin case. This is a very crucial part of setting your tension on this machine, and it's very important to know what screw to tighten. It's not this screw, it's this screw. It's the first, it's the big screw that's kind of recessed into the bobbin case, okay? This one kind of sticks out, see? And this one's kind of flush, it's this one, okay? And when you're tightening this, you're not tightening it a huge amount. You're tightening it about a quarter of a turn each time, if that. So let's just do a quick little example. You're just gonna be, well, it's kind of hard to show on video. You're just going to be doing a very tiny little turn like that. So just small amounts to do a big change. That's all. Step 10, oiling your bobbin holder. Very simple step, but very commonly missed, okay? All you're going to do is drop one little drop of oil right here on this second ledge right there. That's all you need, one little drop. And I like to kind of just like push it around so it kind of works into its spot. Um, and if you don't do that, you're going to be burning through bobbin cases, and a lot of people come to us buying more bobbin cases because they're burning through them, and it's just because they're not oiling that little step right there. Making sure you oil that every four to six hours of use is crucial, and that's it. Step 12, reverse lever. Now, when you're adjusting your stitch length, your reverse level lever will move, as you can see, moves up and down. Don't worry, that's totally fine. Now, when using your reverse lever, you must hold it down while sewing for it to actually reverse. You can't, it's not a button, you don't just press it and it starts reversing. Unlike, or like a computerized machine, this is a manual one you have to hold down. Alrighty guys, so step 13 is going to be oiling this machine. There's two holes here and two holes here. One to two drops every four to six hours of sewing. And then there's two holes here in the throat area. Okay, and obviously the hook. We have a video way more in depth on oiling this machine and cleaning this machine. Make sure you're doing this frequently as your machine will be much happier if it's clean and oiled. There's a video linked in the description going in depth on that subject. Now step 14, which is the needle, or the thread cutter, sorry, thread cutter. Do not be using industrial threads with a thread cutter. It will clog it up, it won't cut the threads, you'll cause more issues than it's worth and anything below a 30 weight thread is probably too thick as well. So remember, 30 weight and up a little bit, and then no industrial threads whatsoever. It's gonna mess it up, and you're not gonna be able to cut threads consistently, and then you're gonna dull out your blades, and you're gonna have issues with normal threads. So don't be doing that, okay? Now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As you may know, we are Juki Junkies, home of Gigi's Fabric Shop, and we do have a website for just Juki sewing machines with tons of notions and threads and materials, scissors, and all those kind of things, um, parts for these Juki machines. So if you have any missing parts on your machines that you need, check out JukiJunkies.com. If you need to watch more videos on Juki machines, subscribe to this YouTube channel as we post frequently. Make sure to like this video and comment down below what user error you are doing. We all have issues with our machines, and it's really nice to just go over these things and admit to them, because once we learn them, we can teach others, and that just creates a better environment for everybody who's using a Juki machine, a better community. Um, also check out our Facebook group. We are now over 20,000 followers on Juki Junkies Facebook, and that has tons of resources on all Juki sewing machines. So thank you so much, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.